welcome to News Hour Special! Today we'll be learning about James V and let's get to the interview. How did you feel when your mother died and war between England and Scotland broke out? I, I was very sad, but also annoyed that I'd have to go to war with England. By the way, England and Scotland are now united. Now, back to the interview. What was the first thing you said when you met Mary for the first time? Actually, I never met Mary, because when she was born, I was on my deathbed of Falkland Palace. Did you ever leave the House of Stuart, apart from propositions, journeys, etc? Actually, yes I did. When? Well, sometimes I would leave the house and go into the countryside disguised under the name of Goodland of Bellingay. Would you like to tell us a bit more about yourself? Well, I think I've already said a lot, but okay, so it's the son of James IV. We know that. Alright, let me continue. I was also the son of Margaret Tudor. She and James IV were married. Obvious. Can I talk? Fun fact, I was married with Mary of Guise when I had Mary to be Queen of Scotland, but I had previously been married to Madeline of Velos. I was born on 10th April 1512. And I was the only child to survive childhood in my family. I was crowned at the age of one and died at the age of 30. Not sure I'm still alive, but whatever. Sadly, I left Mary with no father, but before you interrupt, that's quite obvious. It is. Now back to the... Well, that was unexpected. Back to the studio. Well, that was interesting, meeting James V. I wonder when our James will get back. Yes, it must have been. Sad they couldn't come because I was on business. Oh well, should we summarise what happened? Because I told you over Skype. Did you have any music? No. So, okay, let's do it. James V was married to Madeline of Valais first, then married to Mary, to Mary of Guise. He died just six days after Mary, Queen of Scots, was born, leaving him without a father. He was the only child in his family to survive childhood. He went to the countryside. Disguised under a different name. He lived in the house of Stuart, not a palace, a palace or a castle. He sometimes left the house under the name of Goodman of Belnick. He was crowned at the age of one and died at the age of 30. And that's it. Now we just need to finish. I wonder how that worked. That doesn't matter. True. So guys, this has been News Hour and we hope to see you next time. Bye. And I am Sophie Blumsky. Hi, I'm, I'm Scott Ralph. We are going to be teaching you about Mary of Guise and her life. Guise was born on November 22nd, 1515. She died on June 11, 1560. Mary of Guise was the Queen of Scotland, 1538 to 1542. Mary of Guise was the second wife of James V. Mary of Guise's husband fought in a battle and died a few weeks later. It was on December the 14th, 1542, when he died. His daughter Mary, Queen of Scots, was six days old and she became queen. Mary of Guise was married to James V, King of Scotland. She was also Queen of France before she came to Scotland. Her children were Mary, Queen of Scots, James, Duke of Rossi and James Stuart. Her dad was Claude, Duke of Guise, and her mum was Antoinette de Bourbon. James V was the son of James IV and Margaret Tudor, who was the sister of Henry VIII of England. Henry wanted to make the links between the Scottish and the English thrones. Thank you for watching. We hoped you liked it and we hoped you learned what's about Mary of Guise. Fountain is in the middle of the palace courtyard on the side of the fountain. 
States from the 14th century. It is set in the nation nationally important historic design landscape of Calendar Park, which also contains a section of the Antonian Wall World Heritage Site. The house permanent permanent displays are the story of Calendar House, as a history covering the 11th up to the 19th centuries. The Antonian Wall roams Northern Frontier and Falkirk Crucible of Revolution, 1750 to 1850. It tells how the local area was transformed during the first century of the Industrial e Era. In the restored 1825, 1825 kitchen, costumed in interpreters created exciting interactive experience with samples of early 19th century food, providing added taste to stories of working life in a large household. 150 million years BC, Castle Rocket Sterling is formed. 1214, William the Lion dies at Stirling Castle. 1296, Edward I captures the castle. 1304, Edward and his army besiege the castle for three months. 1317. Robert II repairs Stirling Castle. 1381. Northgate is constructed and can still be seen today. 1513. James V, aged 17 months, is crowded in the castle chapel. 1536. James V visits France and later marries Mary, Queen of, Mary of Guise. 1542. Mary is born and King James V dies. 1543. Mary is crowned at Stirling Castle. 1566. James VI is a baptised at Stirling Castle. 1849. Queen Victoria vis visits Stirling Castle. 1964. Last soldiers leave Stirling Castle. 2001. Work begins on the hunt of the unicorn tapestries. 57. Mons Mag is presented to King James II. 1571-73, the Lang siege, the Portcullis Gate and Half Moon Battery were built to provide better defences after the siege. 1780s, the Lang Stair relayed the prisoners. 1861, the one o'clock gun is fired. 1887, Argyle Tower is built. 1541, James V creates the park. 1745, Bonnie Prince Charles ca camps in the park. 1971, Bossage and Duddingston Wildlife Reserve created. 1977, end of sheep grazing in the park. 1999, Historic Scotland Ranger Service is established. The 
Palace of Holyrood House is Her Majesty's the Queen's official resi resident in Scotland and is the setting for state ceremon ceremonies and official entertaining. Here in the Queen's Holyrood Week, which usually runs from the end of June to the beginning of July, Her Majesty holds inverted shirts in the Great Gallery audience in the morning drawing room and a garden party and enter entertains around 8,000 guests for for all walks of Scottish life. At the start of Her Majesty's visit, the palace forecourt is transformed into a crowded and colourful parade ground where 700 guests stand to watch the enhancement of an ancient ceremony. The presentation presentation of the keys of the city of Edinburgh. While the Queen is in residence, the Scottish variant of the Royal Standard of the United Kingdom is flown and the Royal Company of Archers forms her ceremonial bodyguard. Occasionally, the palace is used by the Royal Family in other times of the year. In September 2010, the Queen received Pope Benedict the Ninth in the morning drawing room during his official visit to the United Kingdom. Fashion in the 1500s. Hats. The hats look funny but comfortable. Here is a hat from 1500s. Hats were popular in 1500s. Ruff. A ruff is a projecting starch frill worn round your neck. They only wear it when they are going to important events like when the princess is going to be crowned. Shoes. The shoes are made out of leather. When you wear them, they would not be comfortable. This is one of the shoes I was talking about. Bags. The bags are made in 1500s, are really swag and small. They have no zips or buckles, so probably not reliable for fashionable. We hope you enjoyed our news production. We worked hard on this, and thanks for listening. This is one of them. talking about fashion in the 1500 and the fashion of American Scots versus Lucas with shoes. We, we hope, hope you enjoy our news report. Various processions which can be seen at Trapware House. The shoe is remarkably small for such a tall woman. Trapware House has confirmed that this shoe as well as two other items were donated by a lady who had always held the items in her family for generations. Her connections were with Mary Seated uh, a lady in waiting to marry the Scots. Next is Logan with women fashion. Fashion in the period 1500 to 1550 in Western Europe is marked voluminous clothing worn in an ab abundance of layers. Re regional variations in fashionable clothing that arose in the 1500 century because more pronounced in 1600 in the Highlands. Ordinary women dressed alike. They were a long shift on which had dropped played and a combo of a cloak and skirt. That is the end of woman fashion in the 1500s. Next is we are telling you information about the upper class fashion. Goth costume at least worn by the upper classes probably begins to emerge from guesswork and obscurity in the 1500s. The painting of royalty became increasingly common. The trend towards portrait also spread through the noble beauty. The painting of Sir Thomas Kelly shows a competent, well-dressed man. His clothes are smart and neatly tailored. Richly but not lavishly decorated. His shirt has a collar folded over his padded jacket, a different pattern to the body, neck, as well as the ears. Thank you very much for listening to our news report on the history of Mary, Queen of Scots fashion in her time. We, we hope, hope you enjoyed, enjoyed it and learned something new.
Today we're going to be talking about old toys they used to play with in the time period that Mary Queen of Scots was alive. Balls. Balls are heavy and light balls you throw. This is how you play. You try to get the big balls close to the small one. Dolls. Dolls in the 1500s were made out of wood, wax and other materials. They don't look like dolls you see today. Dolls in those days looked strict and didn't smile, but dolls you find these days are always got a grin on its face. Hoop and stick. How you play. You push the hoop with the stick and you see how long you can keep it going. You play with this a lot. Other, other toys, toys and, and games. There are yeah, also many, many other different toys from the 1500s. For example, balls, gestures, use cup and ball, spinning top, leapfrog and many more. We are going to talk about to you about sport and our names. Our names are Neve, Jamie, Alexander. We hope you enjoy our report on Tudor sport. Jousting was popular. Only the best were allowed to take part in jousting tournaments. Jousting involves two armoured knights separated by a four foot high barrier. Each knight carried a lance and the objective was to knock your opponent off his horse as he gallops past. Tudor tennis rackets were made of string, wood and pig scuts. Tennis is one of the oldest of all racket sports. During the Tudor times it was played indoors with a net. Football was played differently than it is today. There is no set numbers of teams players so as many people who wanted to join the game the goal posts were placed a mile apart and the players could kick throw or pick up the ball and an attempt to put it between the op opponent's goalposts. Hunting. Only the rich people were allowed to hunt deer. Yeoman farmers could only hunt foxes but the poor were only allowed to hunt hares and rabbits. that Mary Queen of Scots had and what the other people had. We are going to talk about the instruments and when they played them. They played the instruments at some festivals and they are also played in churches. It is also played to the King and Queen. The teachers teach the children music at school. The royal family dance every morning at sports. Mary Queen of Scots had a few instruments. Also played, she also played them. One, of, one was a harp, which is highly sounded and a low sounded instrument, but there is more she has. Interview a man who knows a lot about instruments, and his name is Jack. So, how much did the instruments cost? I'm guessing you would know. Well, to be honest, they're very expensive. Wow, I thought they weren't going to be that much. Well, I have some coins here. Here, I'll show you. They're very old. They must be old. Yep. Thank you for coming in, Jack. No problem. Just now, I'm going to talk about the different types of instruments. There are a lot of different kinds of instruments. There are bagpipes, recorders, flutes, harps, perdigurdies, fiddles, rebecca, and many more. For watching. And we hope you all have learned a lot about music and instruments. Again, thank you, and see you later. Goodbye. Bye. Bye. <laughs> Sophie, Nathan, Stewart, and your special guest, Jack. Today we have a very special guest, Mary Queen of Scots. Hello Mary, I believe you're going to tell us about what food you ate in your time. Indeed I am. They ate swans and a lot of things like that. 
Okay, so now I'm going to tell you about what they cooked with. They cooked the food in a great big room, and I guess you know it. it's called the big, the great hall. And like a sort of pot thing, like salt was also very important back then. It kept the meat fresh. Okay, so basically, salt is the thing that kept the meat in date. Yes, it is. Honey was an affordable alternative to sugar, used to base meals and drinks. Okay, so really, food back then was quite good. At a Tudor feast, roasted peacock is ate all, is ate all the time, non-stop. Sugar was expensive back then, so only rich people could use it back, back then. Sweet desserts as well, so yeah. Okay, so basically food was ba food was good back then. Okay, Mary, so are you done yet? Yes. Boring Ally Trains banter. Thanks for watching. This is by Josh, Cameron and Emma.